It's HBR, All Things Considered, and I'm Dave Lawrence. Today, remembering yet another guest who's passed away, our fifth that we've lost since July. A week ago, it was announced that Grateful Dead bassist and vocalist Phil Lesh had passed at 84. We're digging into a pair of interviews. A much younger yours truly was grateful to do with Phil, starting with this chat recorded backstage in November 2001 at Boston's Orpheum Theater with Phil Lesh of The Grateful Dead. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, not only speak with me, but to do this broadcast with us. I know it's the end of your tour. You've uh, just a few more dates to go to New York, right? That's right. We have uh, one tonight and then two more here in Boston and then six in New York and a benefit at the end of that run. Tell us about the benefit that you mentioned. We're doing a benefit on the 3rd. It'll go through our Foundation Unbroken Chain to the New York Relief Fund. It may go to Twin Towers. It may go directly to fire and police. I'm not sure yet. Bob Weir is going to come out and join us for that. You mentioned the Unbroken Chain Foundation. That's something that really always has drawn me to you and to the Grateful Dead scene is the charitable aspect, the fact that it's a community that gives back. What are some of the other things that that foundation of yours has been able to accomplish or some of the other places that you've been able to uh, put your, your assets behind? Well, my particular horses that I ride with this foundation are twofold. One is music in schools, and the other one is hepatitis C research, organ transplantation, and that sort of thing. In the uh, year 2000, we did a big benefit at uh, Henry J. Kaiser in Oakland and raised a quarter of a million dollars for hepatitis C research. Over the last year or so, we have put a thing together where at some point we invited people to donate, and then we match the funds that they give us, and we give the money to uh, school districts in uh, the places where we go and play all over the country. So, so it has a local sort of impact. That's right. It goes directly to the local school uh, district, to their music education. Have you found that your desire to see music as a charitable or give back situation has in Increase or is it still the, the same strong belief? Well, it's always been strong, particularly in, for music in schools. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for music in schools because it was just there and it, and it just reached out and grabbed me. And I was able to play an instrument, at, uh, starting to play an, an instrument at age eight, and I learned, I learned how to read and write music uh, you know, before that. So it's like something that's always been with me and, it, and it's always been the foundation for everything I've ever done in music. I think my desire to give back to that is stronger now than it, than it was has been in the past because all these programs are being cut. Music in schools and our educational system used to be the finest uh, in the world, the envy of the world. And uh, I don't know what what do they deregulate it or something? Why is money tight for education and it's not and it's not tight for I don't know other things. Something that I touched on, we did a broadcast with Bobby Weir just a couple months ago after the September 11th thing, and that was you guys went to Egypt. You 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 broke ground in 1978. Uh, I was just talking to uh, Warren about that tonight, about that event, and about about the fact that we went there and we played and there was a lunar eclipse, which right. changes things, you know, uh, psychically speaking, I mean, it, it puts a certain kind of vibe on it. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, it wasn't one of our successful performances. And yet, I was, I was describing to Warren how the Bedouin tribes people from the from the desert came in on camels. These are the nomads who had no, no truck with the urban culture, like Cairo, sure. know, Alexandria. They came in and they, they, they hung out and they danced. They were dancing out on the sand. And uh, it was, at the same time as it wasn't a good performance, it was a beautiful event. Phil Lush, for those of us who camped and vanded in the parking lot, <laughs> who, who, were, who were living in the late 80s and trading and the whole bartering system, the sense of community. The community is the legend. And you guys let the community have them. As I told Bobby, uh, you guys don't get enough credit for the fact that there was hundreds of thousands of dollars in commerce going on outside of these shows every night. The band just let it happen because they let these communities exist. Well, it's amazing what you can do if you don't give a shit who gets the credit. So, to me, all the credit for everything that's happened with the Grateful Dead, it really resides with the community because the community really is the music. The community feeds us and we just open up the, the pipeline and out it comes. Flash forward to July 2005. Now, someone you know is here in Honolulu and doing a phoner based around a 1989 archival concert release as we continue remembering our time with the Grateful Dead's Phil Lesh. Uh, it's always great in Hawaii, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> An exciting new DVD and CD release from the vaults is coming out. 
trucking up to Buffalo, 1989 stadium show. And that year, 1989, I always see that sort of a turning point year for the Grateful Dead because that was the year that the camping and vending scene ended with that summer tour. That's one of the years that uh, kind of like faded for me. I don't really remember it that clearly. You remember when you guys had to make that decision to finally pull the plug on the camping and vending? Um, Very, very vaguely. It was something that management, I think, if I remember correctly, presented to us as pretty much an accomplished fact. You know, it was just getting out of hand. We had to do it. I wonder, does it ever occur to you, Phil, that the fact that you guys had a sanctioned community living in your concerts and following you around, it really does separate you in in rock history from from almost anyone else? Uh, I suppose. Yeah, perhaps, but that's always that's always how it was. I mean, that's how it was in the Haight-Ashbury. Uh, that's how it was when we first started touring nationally, and uh, it just kept growing that way, and we never felt like... It was always a little painful when it got so big that we couldn't really connect with the audience mm. while we were performing. You know, stadium shows, they're a gas at first, but then you realize, hey, there's 80,000 people out there, and they, every one of them looks like an ant. <laughs> <laughs> That's very revealing. So at first, it was a gas. It was like it was oh, a sure, rush. Sure, sure. Oh, wow. The power, the, the glory, the grandeur, you know, and all that. But then where's the people? Where's the intimacy of the feedback that you can get in smaller venues? That's why I had so much fun on my book tour, shaking hands with people face to face, close up, talking to them, asking them how they're doing. Are you a musician? Everybody's got a little story they want to tell me about their experience with the Grateful Dead. And it's really empowering and really, I don't know, it just, it's just, it completes something. It fills a gap in my consciousness of what the community's all about. Where they're coming from, whether they're musicians or, or how, how they evolved it to be the fans they are. Exactly. And, and, it's, and it's particularly interesting if they are musicians, because then it gives you a sense that well, what we've been trying to do musically hasn't fallen on fallow ground, as the saying goes. Uh, Grateful Dead gigs here in in uh, Honolulu back in 1970. Oh, geez, yeah. And do you, do you have any recollection? I know that's gone way way back into the. I don't remember the gigs at all, but I just remember being there in Honolulu and uh, having a really good time. You dug it here? Yeah. Oh God, it was, it was our first trip, and I actually I I think I actually uh, described uh, sailing. No, maybe I forget, maybe I left that one out. I mean, I I, I had a really cosmic sailing experience out of uh, uh, Ala Moana Yacht Harbor. Uh, after we did our gigs, so we uh, I stayed over a little while and uh, and uh, went sailing out in the in the in the Pacific there. How long did you stay? Uh, a couple of days. <laughs> They're all the same, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and what other Hawaii experiences do you have? Uh, I've been going back and forth there for quite some time, and it's always it's always a gas to go there and uh, and just sort of flatten out. How often do you get out here? When was the last time you were in? Uh, yeah, oh three. January 03, so... Nice. Not that often, but, uh, you know, I'm always ready to come back. I would love to be uh, the first to welcome you back. Oh, thank you, Dave. You never know. These uh, these things have a way of, of, of generating themselves somehow. You know, that's definitely could happen. I'd love to come over there and play music. I know that. When you're scheduling your dates, do try to keep uh, Hawaii in mind, Phil. I definitely will. Dave, if you know of anybody out there that wants to bring my band to Hawaii have them contact us okay very good the book is searching for the sound my life with the grateful dead the new dvd and also it will be released as a cd too is trucking up to buffalo from the 89 tour and there is also a new dick's picks volume 35 Boy, uh, <laughs> we just keep the hits coming huh? <laughs> you sure do just as long as from, everybody enjoys it uh, we can't go wrong huh? it's been a treat talking about it with you big mahalo oh same to you dave and um, god bless everybody out there if i do get out there come on out and say hello maybe i can lure you over to the studio you never know i i would be happy to do that probably thank you very much dave we'll be talking to you be well phil aloha hey there it's phil lesh from the grateful dead and you're enjoying the ride with our good friend dave lawrence aloha dave